Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we're going to be taking a look at another free code editor that is out there and this one is called Pulsar. You can see it in front of you right now. Uh, it is um, a very storied editor. The, the, the story of this one goes back quite a few years and we're actually going to go through the story first because if you want to understand why Pulsar exists, you got to understand a little bit about the history behind it. Then we'll come back and show you some more of Pulsar in action. So first, let's go back to the very beginning and the very beginning of Pulsar was Atom. Now Atom was invented by people at GitHub. It was a hackable, programmable um, code editor. Uh, actually, this one gave us something else that some of you are going to love and some of you are going to absolutely revile, and that is Electron. Electron was actually originally built to work with Atom. Now, you get the naming convention, right? Atom, Electron, all kind of makes sense. Well, Electron uh, was kind of an embedded version of the uh, Chromium browser for actually running applications. So you could develop applications using web technologies and run them in quasi-native performance. And one of the most important early on in the driving application behind Electron was the Atom editor. But the thing is, Microsoft bought GitHub. Uh, they actually spent $7.5 billion back in 2018 to acquire uh, GitHub. And along with GitHub, they obviously then got the Atom editor. The thing is, Microsoft already have their own code editor. It is called Visual Studio Code. And the thing about Visual Studio Code here is uh, it's an Electron app. Uh, actually, uh, in using Atom and uh, Pulsar that we're talking about today in a little bit more detail, it is uh, an Electron app that owes a hell of a lot uh, to Atom. There's a lot of similarities there. Uh, you can just see they definitely copied the co someone's homework back in the day. So now Microsoft had the problem that they had both Visual Studio Code and they had Atom. So what did Microsoft do? Microsoft killed Atom. So uh, back in 2022, the Atom project was terminated. Now the thing is, there's actually quite a few people out there that really liked working with Atom and don't necessarily like working with Visual Studio Code. Now one of that group, they went on and formed Zed, which I actually talked about very recently, but the other group is Pulsar. So Pulsar is basically a fork of Atom, community developed, uh, that is again, open source. The entire idea behind it is a hyper hackable text editor. What exactly does that mean? It means that it supports extensions and, and tweaking and modifying and that kind of stuff. It's actually kind of become a very normal thing in this day and age, but uh, Adam kind of pioneered it again, and it is built on top of Electron still. So this is an open source project. It is available up, ironically enough, on GitHub. Uh, so you can see here, I got zoomed in a little too much, so it's overwriting stuff. Uh, this is an open source project under the MIT license. It is very actively developed. They did a release last month. Uh, and then on top of that, you can see here, there's 503 total uh, contributors to this project. So this is a very active project, and this is a project that is continuing to update, and that gives us Pulsar. So if you want to go ahead and check out Pulsar, uh, there are binaries available for uh, Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. You can see the various different formats and distros available in the world of Linux. All right, so that is the backstory. That is why Pulsar exists. Basically, it is a spiritual successor to Atom. Now, the next logical question you're going to give me is, why would I choose to use Atom? And I honestly don't know the answer to that. Uh, it's kind of getting harder and harder to pick a, a, an editor in this day and age because there's just so much out there right now. So I'll go ahead, I'll show you again. You can get code completions. There is all of these extensions available for it. Um, you'll notice over here, it takes that traditional open up a directory, use it as a project approach. The big things about uh, this editor ultimately is the extensibility of it. By the way, you're gonna notice like when I say it copy, or Visual Studio copied its homework, control, Shift P brings up the palette. Yeah, so uh, what you're used to using in the world of um, Visual Studio Code, that very much came from here. So you got the typical commands available right there. Uh, the UI itself is completely customizable. Again, you can break things down, move them into different spots. You can dock them accordingly, uh, expand them in and out. Again, what you're seeing over here, this is an example with JavaScript here. I've added some extensions to make this more like a JavaScript style IDE. We'll get back to the extensions in just a second. Uh, you do have, uh, so I will leave this open here full screen. You do have uh, a number of different theme options available to you. You do have your direct review here. Here, but I think the heart of this guy is ultimately this. So all of these are packages that are added as extensions. We'll open up the package 
package manager, which is available in the settings area. You can see right now we're into themes, but you can go ahead and install a, a number of different add-ons and manage this. So we can see here our packages that are available. I've installed a TypeScript one, and then we've got JavaScript editing. A number of things are built in. So this entire thing is basically made out of a collection of plugins. Uh, you can add new plugins available over here. Now, one of the things that you're gonna find is that a lot of things, and I don't know if I'm gonna find one offhand, but here, let me just go ahead and search. So say I'm looking for JavaScript functionality, Come here, I can find JavaScript. And then what you're gonna find is a lot of these are legacy plugins for Atom itself. Some of them are not being updated anymore. And then some of them you will find have been updated to run, uh, let me try TypeScript instead. Some of these have been updated to run on Pulsar and you're gonna find made for Pulsar there as well. So some of these are definitely being updated, but some of them are definitely legacy plugins as well. Um, you can add a number of different things. I'll use one of the simplest examples here, Atom Clock. Take a look down here, nothing there. Add the clock. So we're gonna go ahead and install this plugin and then do, 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 boom. We now have a clock. Nothing really that magical, but it gives you an idea of the functionality that is capable there. It does seem to be mostly backward compatible with uh, the vast majority of Atom plugins that were out there, uh, which does seem to be a nice thing. There is auto update functionality available. And then I mentioned earlier on, there is theming support. So right now you can do theming for the entire IDE uh, like this guy. So warning alert, we're gonna switch to light mode for a second. So there you go. And then we've got another set of dark modes available here, like this guy right here or we can go back to where we started. And at the same time, you can do syntaxes. So you've got uh, multiple different code editors. So here you can see the change there. And I could go here and solarized instead. And then what you're gonna notice is I actually downloaded a theme. So we got Atom Material Syntax. So I could go here and find Atom Material and it's available there. So some of these are available as um, downloads as well, all from directly within the IDE. Now, one of the cool things about Atom is that can really, uh, you can modify the um, the HTML behind the scenes right here. So you can edit the Pulsar style sheet directly. So anything you wanna override or change, you can do it this way. So I think this is the other aspect of what makes this a hackable IDE, so to say. Um, and that's kind of basically the introduction to Atom. The big thing seems to be this package oriented, this plugin based nature, and the fact that you can kind of override and configure just about everything you want in the meantime. Now, one thing I do find kind of irritating, there doesn't seem to be a way to scroll up this display. So I originally had this running on um, a high DPI monitor in 4K. And this is really, really hard to see. I didn't find a way to scale that other than to like go into the settings and change the fonts individually. I can actually grab any code and you can zoom this window in and out, no problem. But it doesn't seem to be the case with the entire uh, UI, which is a bit disappointing. Uh, you do have full integration. You see down here, GitHub integration into the code that you checked out. So you can do check in, check out. Typical type. Uh, GitHub integration. Of course, this was developed at GitHub uh, when it was Atom. So obviously that was a very tight integration and a selling point of Atom. But at this point in time, pretty much every single IDE out there is now offering that functionality. So ladies and gentlemen, that is it. Basically, Pulsar is an open source effort to keep the Atom uh, editor alive. Atom was one of the first Electron apps out there. The reason why we have Electron, uh, you know, love it or hate it at this point in time. And it was, again, a hackable IDE. One thing I will say is I have found that it is more performant than Visual Studio Code. Uh, but definitely less functionality. And I think the other thing that you're gonna find is, again, a lot of these plugins are legacy from back when Adam was like a big thing. Uh, so now you're gonna find the number of dedicated Pulsar plugins is a much smaller thing, but there does seem to be decent backward compatibility. And now the flip side is, uh, so I did uh, this. So you want, for example, if you wanna do, oops, I'm in the wrong cap. So I'll go here. And you search here, so you want to do GDScript, like the Godot programming language. What you're going to find, there's a language, so grammar and completion for Atom code here hasn't been updated in a couple years, did over this one. And when you actually go ahead and install one of these, it breaks and there's no one actually maintaining it at this point in time. And that's definitely one of those things that you are unfortunately going to run into. But if Pulsar takes off, hopefully more of a community builds around it, it'll be interesting to see if that actually happens. But at this point in time, there are so many choices in this area, including, like I said, Zed, which unfortunately is Mac OS only for now, but that was actually formed by the team uh, that originally developed Atom, which Pulsar is ultimately uh, derived from. Uh, so yeah, let me know what you think. Did you use Atom before and did you like it? Are you sad it was shut down? Because if you are, hey, good news. Pulsar is out there carrying the flag. And the thing I do like with Pulsar, uh, so we head on back over here, 
Uh, I like this. I like to see that there are a number of contributors on this. So it does seem like the project is doing uh, decent. Uh, so in the, that's kind of one of these problems with these spin-off projects is, are you going to... Uh, you know, attract enough developers to keep the project alive. And it seems like this one definitely did. So uh, again, if you're looking for an alternative to Atom, this could be it. And it is Pulsar. So it's available. I guess I should mention that. Uh, Pulsar is available at pulsar-edit.dev. Uh, and this is, again, the spiritual successor to the Atom editor, which is really the biggest inspiration you're going to find for Visual Studio Code. I think when you run Atom and you see how things are done, you're going to realize just how much Visual Studio Code ripped it off. But I'd be curious to hear what you think. Let me know. Comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.